The agenda for this particular video is as follows. First, we are going to look at what is Zerodha, how is it relevant in the current context. We will be looking at what Zerodha uses for their modern cloud native tech stack. Most of the tech stack which they have mentioned in their articles are specific to cloud native tech stack and that will help us to understand how they are modernizing their infrastructure with the latest tools. We will look at the scale of Zerodha by looking at some of the numbers which they had published and we are going to discuss the PNL calculation logic which Zerodha uses which has been recently moved to AWS to solve some of the business critical profit and loss calculations in a day-to-day -day feed. We will also look at some of the challenges in moving these workloads and how they overcome that with some workarounds. Finally, we will look at the future tech stack considerations which Zerodha mentions which will help them accelerate and adopt more cloud native tech stack in the coming years. A quick disclaimer, the information shared in this particular presentation is all collected from the articles and the blogs which are posted in the internet and I have linked those in the reference section. Now let's get started. So what is Zerodha? If you are not aware about Zerodha, Zerodha is the largest stock broker in India. In the recent times, it has been creating waves with the volumes and the retail adoption in the country. If you are from the United States, there is something called Robinhood. Zerodha is somewhat similar. So Zerodha is the stock broker using which you can trade in the Indian exchanges. So if you want to buy and sell stocks, mutual funds or bonds, you can use Zerodha for doing that. If you're looking for a system design for a stock exchange, now obviously this is not the video. I have a separate video on that. If you want to take a look at that, you can check the link in the description. So what is the new tech stack which Zerodha has been recently adopting? For the continuous integration and continuous delivery, Zerodha uses GitLab. In addition to using GitLab, they have integrated infrastructure as code provisioning using Terraform and Packer. Using Packer, you can build images and using Terraform, you can deploy into cloud platforms. So Zerodha uses GitLab for the whole orchestration and they deploy the whole pipeline into a EC2 instance initially and then they moved from VMs into containers and then later they moved to Kubernetes. So the transition is from EC2 to ECS and ECS to EKS. So currently their plan is to deploy all the microservices which follows 12 factor principles into Kubernetes and the new application which are getting created in Zerodha is all created with the 12 factor applications in mind and hence it is easy for them to move towards Kubernetes. Since applications hosted in the financial space are critical in terms of monitoring, they are using Prometheus for understanding the infrastructure layer of Zerodha with this, which is deployed in AWS to get alerts on what's happening within the ecosystem. In addition to that, to have app-to-app -app communications much more faster with low latency, they are using NATS as their communication platform. So using NATS, they are communicating between microservices in a much faster fashion. If you don't know what is NATS, do take a look at my video on what is NATS. I had done a hands-on video on NATS as well. You can use NATS as a pub sub system for high latency sensitive applications. And Zerodha uses that in production. Coming to the scale of Zerodha, what does their scale look like? Zerodha's daily volume amounts to almost 50% of the retail stock market volumes in India. In 2019, Zerodha crossed 1 billion retail trades which were processed. As of May 2020, that's when the article was written, 8 million trades a day has been cleared by Zerodha, which makes them the largest retail stock investing platform in the world. After moving to the cloud with some of the components on AWS, Zerodha was able to automate their environment provisioning with all its dependencies, which can be brought up in a matter of minutes compared to hours in the earlier data center architecture. And finally, the cost of the compute has been reduced by 50% in the workloads which they had moved to AWS. And one of the workloads which they had mentioned in their article is the profit and loss calculation, which is the PNL calculation. This particular PNL calculation works on a typical workflow which looks something like this. Usually, there are multiple steps using which Zerodha processes these records before they do a PNL calculation. These steps could be filtering or adding customer information or maybe mapping some specific reference information, etc. There are three different steps before the PNL calculation. And after the PNL calculation, again, there are sequence of steps using which they do post processing, using which they can filter out some data based on maybe 
the value or fields etc now before moving this particular architecture into aws this is how it looked like usually zerodha gets a lot of files from different exchanges these are trading data which gets collated into a system within their data center and these systems were created by vendors or hosted by third party products which can process these files and process that data into a ms sql server ms sql is basically microsoft sql server so all these files are collated and then persisted into a single uh, microsoft sql server database which is again a vendor product right from that vendor product after the data is loaded zerodha systems takes the data from the ms sql server process them do the pre calculation and the post calculation and then they persist into the postgres database this is how the old architecture looked like before they went into aws now after thinking about cloud and thinking of going to aws zerodha wanted to choose a solution which can scale and do parallel execution because the data which comes from different systems they wanted to process them in parallel and they want to process the pre processing and the post processing logic as well in parallel in a much faster pace with less io intensive operation so that's when they decided to go with aws batch and this is how the new architecture looks like the files are going to be coming in from the um, exchanges these are the files which are pulled via the secure ftp protocol and then pushed into s3 buckets once the files are moved to the s3 data store from there there are fleet of ec2 instances which takes those file and do calculations based on contracts and some specific logic which are specific to their business the data which gets filtered is pushed into two different databases one which is based out of mysql the other one is postgres both these databases are deployed on ec2 these are custom databases which are running on ec2 there is no reference on why they chose customly um, hosted ec2 based databases rather than using the aws managed databases maybe the uh, reason could be when they went live there was no aws managed databases for postgres and mysql that could be a possible reason but uh, in the article they have mentioned that um, they are hosting the postgres and mysql on ec2 instances once the files are passed and pushed into the database there is a specific job which gets triggered inside aws batch which moves the data from the databases into a redis cache that's what the blue line signifies right as four here so the data is getting pushed from the database to redis so that they can have faster io processing during the real time batch calculation which is this green so there is a aws job which starts processing the records and they persist the process records back into the redis cluster this is done so that they can have faster io compared to the database so that the job can be completed much faster once the data is persisted into the redis cluster it is again moved back into the database by again another fleet of ec2 instance which does post processing because once the data got processed by the aws batch these are raw data again right they will have to filter based on some specific logics these could be customer specific logics or filtering of unwanted data etc all those are done in the post processing uh, ec2 instances again they are pushed back into the databases the mysql and the postgres so this is the whole component of pnl calculation which was moved from the on premise data center into aws and this is what we have publicly available in the internet there is also a reference about some of the challenges which they had when they moved to aws batch and what is that right AWS batch takes almost 5 minutes to start up because an EC2 instance takes almost 5 minutes to start up and if they want to kick up the batch they are losing again 5 minutes because the batch is not up yet in order to overcome that they had pre-warming compute instances they know that the batch is going to start at let's say 9 pm in the night so they pre-warm these instances beforehand so that they have these fleet of EC2 instances ready and they can start the back jobs on those ec2 instances so that was one challenge which they had faced and then they had a work around to solve that also by means of moving to aws batch they had reduced the batch processing time from 7 hours to approximately 20 minutes to 30 minutes so which is a huge leap in terms of the batch times because of the volume it used to take 7 hours and with respect to parallel processing and using aws in terms of bursting your compute to have these trades processed in a matter of minutes is a huge success for a company like zerodha 
in order to come up with the specific set of aws batch uh, instances zerada conducted a lot of experiments to define set of tasks which should be submitted at a specific number of vcpu and memory and that's how they arrived at a particular number because initially obviously they wouldn't have known how much vcpus they have to configure how much memory is required and what is the size of the task and things like that so they had to run some experiments to create a best fit strategy which can be auto scaled with the number of ec2 instances and that can be spawned based on the volume so this is one of the use case which zerodha has mentioned in the article on how they moved to aws now coming back to the future tech stack of uh, zerodha which they have been planning to implement in the coming years they are going to use envoy for application level networking so if you want to communicate between applications to have faster sidecar processing in terms of container usage they wanted to leverage envoy and they are experimenting again with api gateway kong for exposing an api gateway across zerodha which will be hosted using kong since they are using kubernetes they wanted to leverage service mesh capabilities and already they had been planning for using envoy so using istio they can leverage envoy and also for log tracing they can use agar in order to trace logs across their microservices and since they are already using prometheus which is again coming up with istio they wanted to have istio as a service mesh so that they can plug all the cloud native tech stack into their architecture using all these cloud native technologies along with aws zerodha wants to have a faster iterative deployment which can have a well defined moving parts that can be easily managed i hope you had a fair idea of what zerodha uses and what zerodha had explained in terms of using aws batch for their pnl calculation system if you want to read about these articles do check out these reference links which i have pasted in the description box as well whatever i had explained in the video with the diagrammatic format you can see that in a textual format in these two articles I hope this particular video helped you in understanding the Zerodha case study. If you want me to make more videos on similar case studies, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.